we are discussing the predictions of the nuclear cell model and in the previous lectures you have seen till now we have discussed actually the two important predictions of nuclear cell model the first prediction was regarding the ground state parity and spin of the nuclei and in second prediction we have discussed the magnetic moment of nucleus on the basis of uh, nuclear cell model particularly the single particle model or you can say the independent particle model now in this series today we will see an important prediction of this uh, nuclear cell model and this is regarding the electric quadrupole moment of a nucleus but uh, before uh, knowing the prediction regarding this electric quadrupole moment of nucleus by the nuclear cell model i would like to explain in brief uh, what is this electric quadrupole moment of a nucleus because uh, uh, you have studied this quadrupole moment uh, in electro in your course on electrostatics but in nuclear physics actually i have not discussed this uh, electric quadrupole moment till now so i have divided this lecture in two parts our main purpose is to see what is the prediction of nuclear cell model uh, about this uh, electric quadrupole moment but uh, as uh, i think i have not explained this quadrupole moment for a nucleus so first of all i would like to explain the a quadrupole moment of a nucleus in general and then we will see what prediction was made by the nuclear cell model for this electric quadrupole moment so uh, i have divided this lecture actually in two parts the first part of the lecture deals with the electric quadrupole moment of a nucleus and the second part is related to the prediction of this quadrupole moment uh, in a, on the basis of nuclear cell model so let us uh, start to know first of all what is this electric quadrupole moment in fact uh, till now you have seen that in most of the cases we have assumed that our nuclei are spherical but it is not a real fact all nuclei are actually not spherical uh, in fact it is observe that there are so many nuclei which are not spherical but they are of uh, in in fact in general they are of spheroid shape actually how we can what is the parameter on the basis of which we decide that a nucleus will be spherical of uh, with of a spherical symmetry or not of a spherical symmetry in fact uh, this electric quadrupole moment is the parameter which determines that a nucleus will be either spherical or not spherical if a nucleus has this electric quadrupole moment zero then the nucleus is spherical but if it is non zero either greater than zero or less than zero then definitely the nucleus is not spherical so in this way <clears throat> you can define the electric quadrupole moment of a nucleus as a measure of departure of the nucleus from its spherical symmetry how much the nucleus deviates from the spherical symmetry that is measured in terms of the value of the quadrupole moment of the nucleus okay so now uh, let us uh, define this quadrupole moment in uh, a quantitative manner although i have not uh, uh, considered here the total calculations the the basic calculation you find in your electrostatics course so that will be a lengthy process or lengthy calculation but our basic aim is to discuss the quadrupole moment of the nucleus predicted by the nuclear cell model so in brief i would like to explain in a quantitative manner the electric quadrupole moment of the nucleus first 
so let us consider that this is just a nucleus and this uh, nucleus is symmetrical about uh, the body z axis this z axis is actually a space fixed z axis or you can say the body z axis and we assume that our nucleus is actually symmetric about this body z axis and if the nucleus is symmetric about this body z axis then how the quadrupole moment of this nucleus will be defined in a quantitative way i would like to state here you can see i have considered here an element of this nucleus this is just a volume element and i have assumed that this volume element is d tau and uh, this volume element is situated at a uh, at a point uh, whose position vector with respect to this origin is equal to r you can see now if you uh, take the projection of this r on the z axis you have to draw a normal from this uh, element to z axis and let us suppose the projection of r on z axis is simply equal to z as you can see and as the charge of the nucleus is distributed in its entire volume so you can define the volume charge density of this uh, charge distribution although the charge distribution may be uniform or non uniform so in general you can say that charge distribution uh, that is the volume charge density should be a function of r it means we consider that the volume charge density is different at different position so in this uh, condition if you want to define this uh, the the quadrupole moment of this nucleus Uh, for this uh, body x z axis which is about which the nucleus is supposed to be symmetrical that quadrupole moment is denoted by the symbol q and it is defined by this equation you can see this is integral over tau rho of r 3z square minus r square d tau okay and in a state of this volume element d tau you may also write d3 r so this is the quadrupole moment of this nucleus about the, when we consider that the nucleus is symmetrical about this uh, body z axis or a space fixed z axis okay here rho this is volume charge density as you know and d tau is the volume element now you can see from this expression that the si unit of this quadrupole moment will be coulomb meter inverse coulomb meter inverse but in nuclear physics or high energy physics it is customary to express the quadrupole moment in unit of area that is in unit of meter square or bar in fact the value of this quadrupole moment is very small and meter square is a large unit so if you will express the quadrupole moment in meter square the numerical value will be very small which will be not convenient so for a convenient number we use a very small unit of this quadrupole moment and that unit is barn in fact one barn is equal to 10 to the power minus 28 meter square you can see this barn is a very small unit so as i have told you that in nuclear physics there is a tradition there is a custom that we define the quadrupole moment in the unit of area not as coulomb meter square so coulomb should be cancelled and for this purpose in nuclear physics we define the quad we divide the the expression which de actually defines the quadrupole moment uh, in equation 1 you can see by the charge of the proton when you will divide it by charge of proton let us see here 1 over e then the unit of this quadrupole moment will be simply meter square this is just a, a tradition just a convention in nuclear physics okay now you can see 
if our nucleus is spherical or you can say the charge distribution of the nucleus is spherically symmetric about this z axis then what will happen you know in this condition actually the mean value of x square y square and z square this will be all these will be equal if the charge distribution is spherical and as you know that r square is equal to x square plus y square plus z square where x y z is actually the space coordinate of the volume element okay so in this condition uh, what will be this uh, z square z square is simply 1 over 3 r square and so if you will put here the value of this mean value of z square in this equation so this 3 z square means 3 into 1 over 3 r square so this will be simply r square it means 3 z square will be what that will be r square so r square minus r square will be 0 it means the quadrupole moment is 0 as i have told you earlier that if the charge distribution of a nucleus is symmetric about this uh, symmetry axis that is z axis then the quadrupole moment of the nucleus is 0 so in nutshell you can say that the quadrupole moment of a of all spherical nuclei are zero on the other hand you can uh, take this quadrupole moment as a criteria as a parameter to decide that the nucleus is spherical or not so you can say all those nuclei for which the quadrupole moment about the body z axis is equal to zero all those nuclei will be spherical okay now let us consider that the charge distribution of the nucleus is stretched along this uh, symmetry axis that is z axis you can see here charge distribution elongated or stressed in the direction of this z axis in fact in this condition if the charge distribution is stressed or elongated in this z direction then this shape of the nucleus is called prolate shape this is called prolate or you can this is just uh, egg like shape you can say egg like shape and in this condition as the charge distribution is elongated or stressed in z direction so 3z square is greater than r square and you can see from this equation 2 if 3z square is greater than r square the value of this integral will be positive will be greater than 0 so in this condition q is greater than 0 so in nutshell you can say that if our nucleus is of prolate spheroid shape or its charge distribution is elongated or stressed in z direction then the quadrupole moment of the nucleus is positive okay but if the charge distribution is elongated in a direction perpendicular to this uh, z direction then the nuclear charge distribution is called oblate that is called oblate and uh, if the charge distribution is oblate in fact in that condition you can see here the shape will be just like this this is your z axis and charge distribution is elongated in a direction perpendicular to this z axis and this shape is known as oblate shape this is just like a pumpkin and in this condition this 3z square will be less than r square and uh, you can see from this equation 2 that if 3z square is less than r square the value of this integral will be negative that is the dipole uh, sorry the quadrupole moment will be negative that is less than zero in this case so you have seen 
दैट इन केस ऑफ एस्फेरिकल न्यूक्लिया क्यू इज जीरो इफ द न्यूक्लिया न्यूक्लिया आर इनफैक्ट प्रोलेट सेप देन क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट इज पॉजिटिव एंड इफ दीज आर ऑबलेट देन क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट इज नेगेटिव सो आई हैव टोल टोल यू दैट दिस क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट इज द पैरामीटर विच डिसाइड्स द सेप ऑफ द चार्ज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन ए न्यूक्लियस अबाउट द सीमेट्री एक्सिस ओके बट टिल नाउ वी हैव कंसिडर्ड द जेड एक्सिस एज एन एक्सिस ऑफ सीमेट्री एंड दिस जेड एक्सिस इज अटैच टू द बॉडी ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस एंड सो एक्चुअली द रिजल्ट विच बाई विच वी हैव डिफाइंड द क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट इज प्योरली ए क्लासिकल रिजल्ट ओके इट इज ए प्योरली ए क्लासिकल रिजल्ट बट इन न्यूक्लियर फिजिक्स यू नो अवर न्यूक्लियस इज जस्ट ए क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सिस्टम सो डेफिनेटली टू नो द क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट ऑफ ए न्यूक्लियस और द कंक्रीट आइडिया ऑफ क्वाड्रोपोल मोमेंट ऑफ ए न्यूक्लियस वी मस्ट थिंक इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स और यू कैन से वी यूज a semi classical calculation in which some idea will be classical and some idea will be quantum mechanical so when you talk about uh, quantum mechanics then this a space fixed fixed z axis is not the axis of symmetry in fact in this condition in quantum mechanics the spin axis which is also known as i axis because you know the spin means total angular momentum of the nucleus and that is denoted by the symbol i so a spin axis is also called i axis in fact in quantum mechanics we consider that the symmetry axis for the nuclear charge distribution is not the body z axis not the space fixed z axis but the this charge distribution is symmetrically distributed about the spin axis or i axis okay and uh, as uh, you have studied in quantum mechanics and also in atomic and molecular physics that actually the this spin vector i which is total angular momentum this is quantized and uh, if you will place your system that is the nucleus in an external field for example in x any external magnetic field then this spin vector i precedes around the applied magnetic field and this is called lamer precession you know that precession is called lamer precession so in this figure you can see this z axis is the body z axis and uh, i have assumed an another axis which uh, is z prime axis actually this is your spin axis and uh, spin axis means axis uh, which is along the ang total angular momentum vector i or the spin vector i of the nucleus now since this i actually precedes around the applied magnetic field applied magnetic field or any external field and we generally consider that the magnetic field or any external field is applied along the z axis so you can say this i will precess around this b and this uh, during this precession the value of i remains quantized and the angle between this vector i and this uh, applied magnetic field vector that is which is i have which i have assumed here beta that remains actually constant okay and now you can see if you find the component of this spin vector along the applied magnetic field or that is the z direction what will be its component as its z component is also quantized and you have studied it in quantum mechanics the z component of this spin vector iz is equal to mh bar where m is actually known as magnetic quantum number or you may also call it mi h bar mi this is the either m or mi you may write it this is called in fact the 
a spin magnetic quantum number okay in fact the maximum value of this spin magnetic quantum number is equal to i because what are the values of mi you know mi runs from minus i to plus i at a step of 1 at a step of 1 so what will be the maximum value of mi its maximum value is in fact i okay and uh, when we will take actually the maximum value of mi which is i in that condition the value of iz that is maximum value of iz that will be equal to ih bar now you can see the figure in this condition this angle beta will be minimum and what will be this beta you can see from this figure that beta will be equal to this much see the uh, the, uh, the line which i am just drawing this much upon this much and uh, you can see let us uh, name it suppose this point is o this point is a and this point is p so cos beta will be simply equal to oa over op but oa you can see this is ih bar ih bar this is projection of this i along the z axis and uh, ob this will be actually the magnitude of the a spin vector or the total angular momentum vector i you can see so cos beta that will be equal to i h bar over mod of i but you know the magnitude of the total angular momentum that is a spin of the nucleus is equal to what this is root over i into i plus 1 into h bar okay now you can see this h bar and this h bar will cancel out and cos beta will be equal to i over root over i into i plus 1 okay now you can see uh, this figure here i have actually assumed that uh, there is a proton here and another proton is here and uh, the distance of uh, these two protons from this point o are same and that is equal to a i have just assumed it it means uh, we are and uh, this uh, <coughs> proton and this proton actually revolves around the z axis so in this condition we have considered only two protons so uh, the integral will be changed into summation because if the charge distribution is discrete you know in that condition the integration will change into summation integration will change into summation and so we will simply find the quadrupole moment due to this proton number 1 and this proton number 2 and what will be that you can see here as you can see general definition of quadrupole moment you have seen this is this much integral 3z square minus r square rho d tau but uh, if we find the quadrupole moment uh, for the z prime axis that is the spin axis and uh, we have considered only two protons then this integral will change into summation and for the first proton you can see what will be the value of z the value of z means z prime and that is simply equal to a okay that is simply equal to a so just page has been turned and now it will be okay see here and for the second proton again you can say this z is equal to Uh, in fact uh, equal to a and uh, r is also equal to a so uh, the term 3z square means 3a square r square means a square and since uh, we are considering the discrete charge distribution so here 
rho into d tau means what rho into d tau is just the charge elementary charge uh, here at the place of this elementary charge will be charge of the proton okay this is for the first proton and same term will be for the second proton because z and r are both same for the both proton since we have considered only two protons so this uh, integration has been changed into summation and so you can see this is simply 2a square e plus 2a square e and this is 4e a square okay now if we find uh, the this result for the z axis you can see for the z axis if you want to find it then for the z axis you have to consider this only one proton and uh, in this condition there will be one proton and uh, so 3a square minus a square into e that will be 2e a square okay and you have uh, uh, written here 3 cos beta square you can see actually the what will be this this value if you want to write the value of z in terms of this a you can see that uh, this in terms of a if you write this oa as z then cos beta classically will be equal to z over a and so z will be equal to what this will be a cos beta a cos beta okay so in this condition what will be the result you can see again there are two protons uh, let us try to clear this term how this term has been arised in this condition if we consider the quadrupole moment uh, for the z axis then what will be the result we have to consider this expression in fact in this condition classically because z is just a classical axis so we will apply this classical formula see here and you can see from this figure that uh, if we consider that this oa is equal to z and uh, this op is equal to a cos beta will be a cos uh, cos beta will be z over a and z will be a cos beta okay so for the first proton for, for the first proton what we will write see here i am just writing it this will be 3 z square z square means what you have seen this is a square cos square beta okay minus what minus r square so that will be equal to a square okay and uh, charge of the proton this much again for the second uh, uh, proton this will be again 3 a square cos a square beta a minus a square into e okay so you can see here what will be our result in fact a square will be a common factor e is also a common factor okay and this will be a square e in and both terms are same so you can write 2 into one of the terms and this will be 2 e a square into what into 3 cos a square beta minus 1 have you understand or not 
if you want to find the quadrupole moment for the z axis then you have to write this classical formula and uh, in this condition z is since the classical body axis so i have written the value of cos beta in terms of z and a not in terms of the the spin magnitude of spin vector and its projection on z axis okay you can see the difference this is actually classical result okay so for the classical z axis quadrupole moment is what q not 2 ea square into 3 cos beta square minus 1 now you can see as i have calculated the quadrupole moment uh, about the z prime axis that is about the spin axis and that is q not prime and which that is equal to 4 ea square so this 2 ea square may be written as 1 over 2 q not prime and uh, the remaining factor is 3 cos square beta minus 1 now we have already calculated in this equation 3 the value of cos beta now one thing first of all i would like to clear here why i have called uh, uh, the calculation semi classical you can see this result for q not is purely a classical result and if we will now refine uh, we if we will uh, replace this cos square beta by the expression defined in equation 3 that is uh, that equation 3 is actually a quantum mechanical equation so some part of our calculation is classical and another part is quantum mechanical so this is called semi classical calculation okay now see 3 cos square beta minus 1 what will be this i have just calculated it separately here you can see 3 cos square beta minus 1 will be what put the value of cos beta cos beta is this much you can see this is i over root over i into i plus 1 so this will be 3 i square over i into i plus 1 one of the i will cancel out and take the lcm and you will get that this 3 cos square beta minus 1 is equal to what this is 2 i minus 1 over i plus 1 so instead of this 3 cos square beta minus 1 i have substituted here this uh, 2 i minus 1 over i plus 1 okay so this is actually the value of q not again in instead of this q not you may write uh, the integral rho 3z prime square r square times d to Uh, you can write it okay because q not prime this is actually the quadrupole moment about the z prime axis that is the spin axis so here z has been replaced by z prime okay but uh, uh, our present interest is for this result that is uh, q not equal to 1 over 2 2 i minus 1 over i plus 1 times q not prime okay i hope you are getting the things now see if we consider that i is equal to 0 i 0 means the mean value of 3 cos square beta minus 1 will be equal to 0 it means you are talking about a nucleus whose spin that is total angular momentum is 0 and you know if the nucleus is of closed cells all the cells of the nucleus are closed then its total angular momentum is equal to zero that is spin is equal to zero so in that condition you can see that this q not is equal to zero but this q not is equal to zero does, does not uh, imply that the charge distribution is spherical i have uh, cut here this sign of implies so this is it means this does not imply that charge distribution is spherical even when the charge distribution is not spherical even then this term average value of 3 cos square beta minus 1 may be zero and the quadrupole moment will be zero okay 
Now consider uh, a nucleus for which the total angular momentum that is spin of the nucleus is 1 over 2. 1 over 2. You can check if we will put i equal to 1 over 2. i equal to 1 over 2. Then what will be 2i minus 1? Check. This will be 2 into 1 by 2 minus 1 and that will be equal to 0. So 2i minus 1 will be 0 and hence this q0 will be equal to 0. So for all those nuclei whose angular momentum is half, the quadrupole moment q0 is equal to 0. Okay. It means the smallest value of the spin of nucleus for which quadrupole moment q can not be 0 will be i equal to 1 because you have seen if i is equal to 1 over 2 then quadrupole moment becomes 0. So you can say the smallest value of the spin of a nucleus for which the quadrupole moment is not 0 that will be actually equal to 1. Okay, Remember this thing. Now in pure quantum mechanical calculation, this quadrupole, if you want to find the quadrupole moment of a nucleus, then there is a simple technique. Actually, you have seen that in the quantitative expression for the quadrupole moment, there is a, a factor which is actually the volume charge density but if you find if your aim is to find this quadrupole moment by quantum mechanical definition then this volume charge density rho is replaced by the probability density and you know according to max born interpretation of wave function the probability density is simply equal to what this is a square of the modulus of the wave function. So psi mod psi square which is also written as psi star psi where psi star you know is the complex conjugate of psi. We will simply replace the rho by this psi star psi. Okay. So what will be the expression for q in this condition? You have seen that uh, the expression for the quadrupole moment is this much defined in this equation. So in this condition, we will simply write 1 over 2, 2i two minus 1 over i plus 1 and integral of this much. This rho in this equation 5 will be replaced by psi star times psi. Okay, psi star times psi. So you can see the expression becomes 1 over 2, 2i two minus 1 over i plus 1 integral psi star r, 3z prime square r, psi r d top. Okay, this is actually the quantum mechanical definition or expression for the quadrupole moment. Till now we have actually not taken into account what the nuclear cell model says for this quadrupole moment. I have just given a brief introduction or brief idea of this quadrupole moment of a nucleus. Now our prime aim in this lecture is to know uh, what is the prediction about this quadrupole moment by the nuclear cell model. What the nuclear cell model says about the quadrupole moment of the nucleus. In fact, this uh, nuclear cell model predicts this quadrupole, quadrupole moment of a nucleus. As you know, in the independent particle model or the single particle model, you know uh, the all the properties of a nucleus in accordance with the cell model is determined only in terms of those elect, uh, nucleons which are uh, which are not in a closed cell. It means in a nucleus there are 
the inner cells which are completely filled by the nucleons and the outer cells may contain one or more than one nucleon and according to cell model all the properties of a nucleus is determined in terms of uh, those unpaired nucleon which are in fact uh, in the outermost cells okay so i have mentioned it here you can see that in this model the properties of the nucleus are described in terms of one nucleon or the few nucleons outside the closed cell configuration all these things you have studied in the nuclear cell model okay now if the cell is completely closed cell is completely closed what does it mean it means the number of nucleons in in these cells are equal to what that is uh, that is same as uh, which we which is needed for its complete filling so these are closed cells and you know if the cells are closed then according to nuclear cell model the total angular momentum or total spin of the nucleons present in the closed cell is equal to zero because in a closed cell nucleons are paired and in paired state the spin of the nucleons cancel one another so spin will be i will be equal to zero and uh, you know when i will be equal to zero in fact in that condition the quadrupole moment will be also zero and if quadrupole moment is zero you know the nucleus will be spherical so according to this cell model the closed cells will be assumed is spherical in shape okay then uh, what is the reason of the deformed uh, shape of nucleus if the nucleus is not spherical its shape has been deformed what's the reason actually deformation will be due to the unpaired nucleon present in the outer cell so deformation arises because of the interaction with the outer nucleons because the outer cells are incompletely filled uh, the odd nucleons are present in them and that is uh, for those cells you can say that quadrupole moment will be not zero and if quadrupole moment is not zero the cell the nucleus will be not spherical and such nucleus will get deformed okay now as i have told you that uh, uh, in the in the <coughs> not completely filled cell there may be one nucleon or more than one nucleon but uh, if you consider that uh, uh, that there is only one nucleon outside the closed cell in fact in that condition the deformation of the nuclear shape is small it means the deviation from the spherical shape of nucleus is not very large the deviation is very small okay and in that condition as i have mentioned here that the cell model single particle description of the nucleus is expected to be valid so if a nucleus contains odd proton or odd neutron in its outermost cell then the calculation of the quadrupole moment is possible on the basis of the nuclear cell model now let us consider a nucleus which is actually odd a and odd j z odd z it means this nucleus has odd proton number or you can say there is only one proton outside of the closed cell it means you are considering a nucleus whose all cells are closed 
but there is only one cell outside of the closed cell which contains only one proton let us consider now if we want to find the quadrupole moment of such a nucleus which has only one proton outside of the closed cell then the quadrupole moment can be found by this expression i have written the quadrupole moment by the symbol qp p for proton and this will be integral e times 3z square r square mod of psi n square d top sorry <coughs> mod of psi n square d top uh, in fact uh, if uh, you want to not write this factor e here that will be correct we cannot uh, write this because i have told you that uh, the charge density rho is simply replaced by the <coughs> probability density psi n actually this psi n is the nuclear wave function in fact uh, i have not uh, calculated this integral in detail i am just giving you a hint you have to remember these things because the calculation will be so lengthy that uh, in examination uh, you cannot do uh, such calculations so uh, how you can write the uh, answers in your different type of examination my lecture is just like that not uh, a very detailed calculation you can see here actually this if you want to solve this uh, uh, integral first of all we have to re, uh, we express this nuclear wave function as a product of the three functions this is this psi n will be written as r of r y l l of theta phi and chi of half in fact here this function r is the radial wave function or simply the radial function this y l l is a spherical harmonic and you know this chi half is actually the spin wave function for the half spin particle so for actual evaluation of qp psi n in this equation 7 is replaced by this expression and then the integral is carried and uh, i have not actually uh, shown all those calculations but what the final result is obtained after doing that integration you can see here in fact the spin of the nucleus you know is equal to l plus minus s but our nucleon has a spin quantum number s equal to half so i is equal to l plus minus half so if we consider the spin of the nucleus equal to l plus minus half then for a nucleus whose quadrupole moment is only due to a single proton in the incompletely filled cell comes out like this i have not uh, integrated uh, i have not solved that integral but after solving that integral we get this result so you have to remember this result just now okay you have to remember it qp is equal to minus 2i o minus 1 over 2i plus 1 times mean value of r square this is mean value of r actually this symbol uh, which i have written here r square inside a bracket this is actually the mean square distance of the proton from the center of the nucleus or you may also call it that this is actually the mean square dis uh, or radius of the orbit of the proton r square you can call it the ra mean square radius of the orbit of the proton okay so this is the value of qp that is this is the value of the quadrupole moment for a nucleus containing only one odd proton or only one proton in its uh, uh, outermost cell which is actually outside of the closed cell and this result has been obtained on the basis of the prediction of the nuclear cell model 
but uh, the result obtained is uh, correct or not let us see in fact observation says that the quadrupole moment obtained here on the basis of this nuclear cell model is actually is uh, in agreement with the observed value of a nucleus but only when the you are considering a nucleus which is near a, a closed cell it means this result is not valid for all the nuclei but if our nucleus is near the closed cell then this value obtained by the nuclear cell model is almost equal to the observed value then you can say that this value agree with the experimental value or observed value although in fact for other nuclei this value which has been obtained on the basis of nuclear cell model differs much from the observed value in fact the observed value of the quadrupole moment of the nuclei are very large in comparison to this qp so i have mentioned here that these values are too small and also have wrong sign here you can see there is a minus sign but in observation in experiment it is found that the quadrupole moment are not uh, negative but positive so this value is much smaller than the observed value and also here the sign minus comes wrongly okay so the prediction about the nuclear about the quadrupole moment by the nuclear cell model is not very appropriate it is not very appropriate in fact here the quadrupole moment has been calculated for a single proton but in fact if you want to find a, if you want to explain why the quadrupole moment q of the nucleus is very high very large in comparison to the value obtained in this equation 8 then you have to consider the collective properties of nucleons so when we will discuss in the forthcoming lecture the collective model of collective nuclear model then you will say see that the prediction of the collective nuclear cell model will be more appropriate about the quadrupole moment and in that condition when we consider the collective properties of nucleons actually then uh, we can explain why the quadrupole moment of nuclei is very high very high in comparison to this qp okay so actually the collective behavior here must be taken into consider but according to the single particle model in cell model we consider only one particle and that particle is also assumed to be independent from others this is the reason that the value obtained for the quadrupole moment does not agree with the experimental value okay so i think uh, you have understand this uh, concept of quadrupole moment of nucleus and its prediction by the nuclear cell model now in the forthcoming lecture we will actually see the deformed uh, nucleus that is nielsen potential we will consider and then we will see very important concepts